Hi, I'm Julia. And I'm Sue. And welcome to Sticks and Stones. We are a knitting and beading and crafting video podcast that will hopefully inspire you to join us in some homemade crafts. My name is Sue Newquist, and I have a business called Redtail Designs. I work mostly in jewelry, but I also do some sewing, and I like all types of crafts. Uh, I'm willing to try just about anything that involves fabric or thread or needles or yarn. I might even try some knitting. <laughs> and that's what we're all here for, right? No. Um, I'm, I'm Julia Swart, and I have a beginning business called We Sheep Knits. I have some patterns listed on Ravelry, and I do a lot of custom knitwear for friends and, and family. Um, most of my free time is spent knitting, which I think is a, a big sanity saver. Um, <laughs> but I do also enjoy beading <laughs> and um, sewing and whatever other craft I can try. I just finished up a few projects. I finished this one last night. This is a horsehair bracelet. That's the main part of my, what I do at my business. And I take the tail of different people's horses and I braid them into jewelry. And so this one was made from actually three horses. And so uh, two of them were black and one was brown. And um, the client only wanted the back of this engraved because I engrave the front sometimes. So it turned out pretty neat. You engrave it yourself? Uh, no, I actually have a company that does it for me, but um, That's really pretty. I can only do so many crafts at one time. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't gotten into graving, engraving yet. And sometimes you put beads on these too, right? Yes, I do. Um, if that's what they want. I'm actually working with someone right now who wants to have a bracelet done with teal and purple beads. So, um, And I also finished up a bunch of bibs because suddenly there's a baby boom again. And so I um, did all these bibs that I'm going to be sending out to um, someone who just had a baby, but... What I'm most excited about is these tags that I just made. Um, you know, I've been looking at getting tags for my different things that I sew, but I don't really need to order a thousand of them mm -hmm. because I'm not making a thousand things right now. And so I was able to print these out on an inkjet printer, iron them to set them, and wow. so now I have tags. So maybe in a future segment we'll show people how to make tags that's for their really, jewelry. That's a great idea. So that's pretty much what I've been working on. Let's see the rest of your bibs here. Sure. I love um, these colors. Yeah, I, this is my favorite one with the monkeys. And what I like about it, too, is there's a fun side, and then there's a little more serious side. You know, you go out to dinner. Um, and um, this one, I love this print, the little birds. And um, those are really cute. This one's kind of girly because it's a girl. <laughs> and I guess owls are still hot. So, but on the back, this one could be a boy or a girl one. Yeah, those are really nice. So, fun stuff, and boy or girl. I like to try and make them unisex, especially if you don't know who's coming. Are they lying or anything? Uh, no, and actually, I've had, I've made these for quite a few people, and most people say these are better than the bibs that come with, like, a bib set, mm -hmm. because they're, a lot of times they have a lining in them, in them, and so when the baby's drool, it slides right off. Oh. <laughs> and so these just get completely soaked, but then they take it off and put another one on. Great. So I've made some of these for people who have been using them for like two or three years now because they're really big too. I have little ones, but the really big ones are great for kids who are a little older. Mm -hmm. um, and I used these on my kids until they were like three or four. Those are nice. So, like yeah, they're fun. No more babies in this house. <laughs> no more babies. Um, well, let me show you a couple other things that I just picked up yesterday, actually. We have a little group that gets together on Monday nights at um, the local brew pub called Pints and Pearls, and um, I was able to acquire a little ball of Classic Elite Firefly, which is um, linen and viscose, and I've never worked with linen before. I've really been very curious about it. Um, it appears to have absolutely no memory. So whatever it is I'm going to be making is going to be really, really drapey. But I have two balls of this I'm going to play with, and I'm really excited about it once I finish my other projects. I'm going to try this. And then a local, um, a local friend of ours actually um, has a llama supplier. So I came home with a bag of llama last night. Um, this is just completely fresh off the animal. There's not uh, any processing done with it at all, so there's little bits of, of fiber inside it. Um, Part of my crinkling. Here, I'll pull a little bit out so we can see. Is it really soft? It, it's pretty soft. Oh, it is. Um, it needs to be washed and carded and combed and all the good stuff. And I've never, I've never done fiber from this state before. So this is kind of exciting for me. And um, I'm thinking maybe 
in a future segment, um, you guys can join me in the bathroom and we'll clean the llama together and see see how it goes. It doesn't look as dirty as sheep a lot of times does. I guess no. that's because there's not the lanolin in it. No, there's no the lanolin, sheep. and it's a lot, surprisingly, it's a lot fresher smelling than I expected it to be. It's really not. Oh, yeah. I think so. has to put scent with that. It almost smells perfect. Yeah, maybe she did. Maybe I don't know. Maybe her lava's deodorized. But uh, there's some really neat colors. These are kind of like a nice fawn and a darker camel. And then I have some off-white in here. And I just thought it would make a really interesting um, an interesting thing to spin. I've never tried this before. That'll be so, fun. Yeah. So that's, that's one of my new acquisitions. Did you get anything new this week? Mm. No, I don't think so. And not every week do you have to go out and buy crafting things, but it's a very <laughs> difficult thing to turn away from when it's offered to you free. Yeah. Uh, something I did make this week, though, this is one of the few fun things that we did, is uh, we made these little birds. And um, actually, for my daughter's birthday, I gave her a roll of felt like this because she's always in my wool felt. Mm -hmm. And, you know, craft felt's like 29 cents a piece, and wool felt's more like... $15 a yard, oh, and so, gosh, yeah. you know, I'm always like, I don't know if you should be using that to make a cheap toy for the dog. Um, so I bought her some felt, and I was looking online and found this really cute little bird from, it's on Petite Pearls, and we'll put the website at the end so you can uh, get there yourself. And so, it's a really simple pattern, it's just this little petal shape. And then there's wings, and you embroider on the eyes. And she actually said, I want you to be able to open the beak. So we, we modified the beak a little and made it a diamond instead of a triangle. Okay. And the pattern, they just made it a, a triangle and attached it like that. But we made it so um, you could open it, and a little tail on the end. And so um, I think it's cute for spring, and she is going to make some for her cousins for Easter. That's very cute. So Yeah, I like it. It's really cute. So so. It's nice that the kids can get involved, too, with that kind of a project. It's simple enough that she can make it herself. Right, right. I was trying to get my five-year-old to do it, and um, I don't know. I think he would uh, cut out the pattern and maybe sew for, like, five minutes and then be done with that. Mm -hmm. So that's what you do when you're five. <laughs> <laughs> we all have little kids. Both of us have small children. Well, not so small anymore. My three children are almost eight, six, and four. Yes, and, and I have a nine-year-old and a five-year-old. So. so, and they they all get along very well. So who knows? Maybe we'll do a the kids craft too. You guys are going to be ready for lots of exciting things from us. I hope. <laughs> I hope. I hope. Um, so that's kind of the gist of our our basic part of the show. Uh, and then we'll get into some DIY. For today's DIY segment, I wanted to show you a little bit about what you need to do some beginning knitting. Um, it's a pretty popular craft right now, so um, you can find a lot of the supplies at your basic um, big box craft store, but when you go in there, sometimes it can be a little bit confusing as to what to get. So let me start by showing you the different basic kinds of needles. There are two basic kinds you'll find at the store. You can either find metal or you can find wood. These are made of bamboo. Some of them are rosewood or some other varieties. But the um, basic difference is when you're, you're looking to buy them would be what kind of yarn are you using. Um, a slippery yarn will slide right off of a metal needle where the wooden one's a little bit more grippy. Um, and then what kind of pattern are you going to be using because the uh, metal ones tend to be slightly sharper and are better for cables or lace than um, a more blunt wooden needle would be. So those are two things to, to look for. Um, also you might find what's called a circular needle. Now, this is the same basic tips as the um, straight needle, only it's attached by a fiber. Um, it's much more flexible, typically used for circular knitting where you're going to keep going around and around and around without any seaming, but if it's a project that maybe you don't have room to carry a big needle, you can use this instead and just work back and forth. You can find what's called a double pointed needle. I prefer these over a circular needle for doing smaller projects. Um, you would use three or four of these in combination to make a triangle and then you use a separate needle to work around the outside of these to create a tube. Um, these are also great for smaller projects where you don't need a bigger needle. You can put a protector on the end so your yarn won't slide off as you're working and just use these instead of the big long one. These also all come, the circulars and the double pointed, all come in 
wooden or metal varieties. And then I just wanted to show you guys a, just a kind of a quick difference of um, sizing of needles. You may have noticed that I have anything from these really, really big fat ones to these little teeny, teeny skinny ones. Um, what this does is it changes your gauge and how many stitches per inch you might have. Depending on the project you're making, the size of the project and the amount of drapiness that you might want to have, um, the size needle makes a big difference. For my example, I used one yarn. It's just this real simple Karen Simply Soft acrylic worsted weight yarn. Um, typically calls for a size 8 needle. So this is a swatch I made with a size 8. I used, um, like I said, the Karen worsted weight. So you can see with this swatch, it's a 20 by 20 square, that the stitches are pretty uniform. It doesn't look real tight or real loose. Now you can take the same yarn and use a different size needle and come up with a whole different fabric. This one's used or made with a size 10 and a half needle. You can see the difference in sizes of the needles as well as the difference of sizes in the swatches. This one is much more drapey, open. Um, it has a lot more um, bounce to it. It's a little squishier of a feel fabric. And obviously it's much bigger with the same 20 stitches as the size eight. Now if you were to go smaller and use, for example, a size three needle, you'll get a much tighter, denser, and again, smaller square with the same 20 stitches. The fabric um, is a much different feel um, and will wear differently than, uh, with a smaller needle than with a larger needle. Something like this might be more for a sock or a mitten that's going to get a lot more wear. This might be for your standard garment, and something like this might be more for a scarf or a hat that's going to be a little bit more floppy. I'd like to show you a couple of the things you can make with just a simple um, stockinette or garter stitch. Stockinette is knit on one side and purl on the other, where garter stitch is knit on both sides. So that's probably the easiest uh, stitch pattern um, and probably something you would try first. So let me show you first garter stitch. Um, these cloth, this cloth is made with garter stitch. Now it also has some short rows, which is a little bit more advanced, but um, nothing that you couldn't learn pretty easily. So as you see on the front and the back, it looks pretty much the same. This side's a little more messy, it is the back, um, but it's all the bumps on both sides. And that's a dishcloth? That is a dishcloth, yeah. It's really cool looking. That's a nice looking dishcloth. Oh, I don't you. know if I would use it to <laughs> wash my dishes. Thank you. And actually I used a set of size 8 double pointed needles with that. Um, and just worked my way around the square. This was um, a little bit of a circular knit on top of being uh, the square in order to make the swirly patterns. So how long does something like this take you? That took me about three hours. And then here's another kind of dishcloth. This is just a real simple um, stockinette stitch. Um, you can see on the one side it is knitted, and on the other side it is purled. But it's just your straightforward back and forth project. Again, I used um, a small size 8 for that. That one's cute too. Thank you. I like it. We'll have some close ups of these at the end for you. Um, now something else that you might want to branch into as you get a little bit more advanced would be a hat. This hat is, um, again, just knit and purl. Actually, no, pardon me, it is all knit. It's worked in the round, so you don't purl at all. And the stripes are created with a slip stitch pattern where you don't actually knit the stitch, you just pull it from one needle to the next. So this is almost easier than doing um, a straight stockinette or knit hat. It just looks much more complicated. That's what I'm all about. Make it look complicated, but make sure it's really easy. Mm -hmm. um, and with that, I used just a, this would be a size, uh, a light worsted finger, or a, a sport weight yarn. I didn't talk about the other ones, the yarn I used. I'll go back to that. Yes, the, I used a sport weight yarn with that. This is a wool blend. 
Um, and there's actually three different colors in there, so there is some striping. Um, and I used, I believe, um, again, probably a five or six. I used double pointed needles. I use my double pointed needles an awful lot. I make a lot of these little quick projects. Um, so I would use this kind of needle again for that. Okay. Let me just step back real quick and show you guys the yarn I used for the dishcloths. It's a, a kitchen cotton, they call it, sugar and cream. Um, it's a worsted weight, 100% cotton. Uh, really is easy to get wet and bounces back really well afterwards. This can also be used to make garments, though I find it to be a little bit stiff. Hmm. Um, so as you get a little bit more advanced, you might branch into something like a sweater. Some people are very intimidated by sweaters, but if you start small, uh, first of all, it's easier to get the hang of, and children's um, measurements are not nearly as difficult to make fit as a grown-up. <laughs> so with small children who have no waist shaping or <laughs> other things to work around, um, this might be an easier starting project for you. Uh, this is, again, just stockinette stitch with a raglan sleeve and a little bit of a collar. I um, added an applique on the front just because my son loves trains. <laughs> and I used, a, um, I used a straight needle for this. You could use either the wood or the metal with this one. It's just a, a back and forth knit. It's really cute. So, and that would use a slightly heavier um, weight yarn. Similar in content to the double knit hat, or the sport weight hat that I talked about, similar content, a wool blend, but it would be a thicker worsted weight instead of the thinner okay. yarn to make a, a slightly bulkier fabric. Nice. And then finally, this is probably my most complicated stockinette um, project to date. This is a sock. Um, a sock does create a little more shaping issues and is a little bit more complicated than your standard back and forth. This will be worked in the round again and um, it uses two colors. But you can see that even with just a simple one stitch, you can make some really elaborate looking patterns just because you know how to do the straight knit, sti knit stitch. Wow, so this pattern up here isn't as complicated as it looks? It's not. <laughs> it's just switching from one color to the next. Huh. Oh, right, because you're going across in rows. Mm -hmm. Every okay. time you go across, it's just where you or what color you add in next. Okay. And I would use a much smaller, I think I used a size 2. These are actually big for socks. Um, I used a size 2 wow. needle for that in the round. So, so comfy. There are some places to start. I know that not everybody uh, wants to make things as elaborate <laughs> as a sock. Um, there's obviously much simpler versions that can be made, but I wanted to show you kind of where you can go with it um, as you get a little bit better and more confident. So, so if I was going to start knitting, because that is the one thing I don't do, partially because I'm afraid I will have to build a room onto my house <laughs> for the yarn, because I know I'd have to collect a whole bunch of yarn. These yes, are very <laughs> small. So. I can fit them into a room, but if I was going to start knitting, I would start probably with a pattern like this. Mm -hmm. Something and simple. What kind of, um, like if you were going to pick out one set of needles and one set of yarn for me, what would you pick out? I would pick you out um, a worsted weight yarn and a size 7 or 8 straight needle Okay. to start. You can make a scarf with that, you can make um, dishcloths, you can, there's a lot of different things you can make flat. Um, without having to worry about the intricacies of working in the round or with the circular needle that sometimes can get a little tricky. Okay, so maybe next time I'll have something like this knitted up. Sounds good to me. Yep. I highly doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get you on the bed again soon enough. I've been resisting for years. Soon enough. So. My mom is teaching my daughter to knit, but and my daughter's like, I'm going to show you, Mom. I'm like, no. no. <laughs> Just wait. Yes. I can only do so many new skills at a time. <laughs> I find it to be very meditative. It really is. It's once you get into it, see that. you don't have to look at it. You just go. Right. Nice. I think that's about it for today. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. Thank you for joining us for our first episode, and hopefully, uh, we'll have some more exciting things to show you next time. And and we look forward to uh, to seeing you back here again. Thanks. We can be found on. Ravelry, my name is We Sheep, also on Twitter as We Sheep. Um, and my website is WeSheepKnits.com. And I'm located on Facebook at Redtail Designs. And I also have a website, website called RedtailDesigns.com. Thanks again. Have a great day. Bye.